Hey everybody, this is Deborah Richmond from Tech Buzz Marketing and welcome to LinkedIn 101. This is very specifically a program about building a powerful network with LinkedIn. Five steps to LinkedIn success. And before we get started, let me tell you just a little bit about myself in case you aren't familiar. My name is Deborah Richmond. I own a company called Tech Buzz Marketing. My company is four years old. Uh, four years ago, I was working in an insurance company in the marketing department when suddenly I was laid off. So in the span of 10 minutes, I, uh, as a single mother, suddenly had no income whatsoever. That day I decided that was the last time that was going to happen to me and so I started my company Tech Buzz Marketing. Now when I got started with Tech Buzz Marketing I was going to be doing traditional marketing however I, st I was fascinated with social media and many people were trying to figure it out so I had pivoted my business and immersed myself into social media and how to really make it work for your business. So everything that I teach and everything that I show is um, things that I use in my own business. I have tested many things I throw away the things that don't work and I bring you the things that do work and so today these are the topics we are going to be talking about in order it's going to run us through um, all of the things you need to know about LinkedIn to really use it as a professional um, and as a business owner to really move your business forward number one we're going to talk about your profile how to optimize it number two we're going to talk about how to make connections and your strategies for doing so Number three, we're going to talk about joining groups. Number four, we're going to stay how to stay active in the groups and why that is so important. Number five, we're going to talk about how you drive traffic to your website. So we're really going to cover all of these things um, pretty extensively so you can go through this piece by piece um, and follow along and do exactly the things I show you with your own account and start having some LinkedIn success yourself. Now before I get started in talking about the, your, your profile, um, let me just say I want to talk to you about why LinkedIn is such a good um, network. Now you probably already have the sense that LinkedIn is a good network because you are watching this and so you know that this is something that could help your business and you are correct. LinkedIn is a fantastic place most specifically for businesses that serve other businesses. So if you sell services or products to other businesses, LinkedIn is a super powerhouse for you. It is a super powerhouse for my company. It is what drives most of the traffic to my, to my website. I now have about a thousand people a month who come to my website and that grows every month and most of them are coming from LinkedIn because of the work I do there and I'm going to show you exactly the things that I do there so that you can do the same thing. Now it's not just for uh, B2B companies because it's also for professionals, professionals who are also working with consumers because business really understands LinkedIn. From the day that it started it was it was a resume spot however it has really grown and evolved but it has stayed in the business realm and so I love that and I know many people love that because it makes sense to us. Some of the other social networks are more about um, gaming and people are using it for lots of other things people here are doing business. So there are there are people here from every industry from every no matter what service no matter what product you sell you're going to find people here uh, involved in those and this is going to be a place that's going to be really useful for you. So let's get started with the profile. I am going to jump over to my I'm going to jump over to the internet All right, so we are now on my LinkedIn page, and we're going to be working um, in my page, so you'll see all of my secrets, which there are none. <laughs> I'm very transparent, so you can see everything that's here. So the very first thing you need to do is you need to sign up for LinkedIn if you have not already. Very simple, you just need an email and a password that you will create. Then once you log in, you will be able to start putting together your profile. I am going to show you my profile. You may have already done this piece and if you have um, still still um, hang on because there's some things you're going to probably learn here that you may want to um, change about your profile. First of all um, let me just say 
LinkedIn changes all the time, so your screen probably looks like this. However, if some of it does not, LinkedIn is always trying new things, which we like because they're keeping it very relevant for us. Now, the first thing that you see at the top of here is a reminder for me, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but essentially, your profile is going to be information that you select, that you decide how you are seen and how it is put together on the internet and so of course you want to use your name you want to put a photo so many people start with LinkedIn and they don't have a photo I, I if you don't have a photo I want you to stop right now and I want you to go put in a photo which is really very simple when you come to your profile if it does not have a photo you will see a gray area and what you want to do is we are going to go to edit profile Edit profile is this the same as your profile page, but here's where you get to make all the all the changes. And so you're going to click on the camera, and then it allows me to choose a file from my from my uh, files to put into uh, the photo section. It's very simple. You go, you use the choose a file to go out to your files, find the one you want, click on it, then you upload, and it will take a couple seconds and it'll pop up in here. Now, as far as choosing a photo, if you have a professional photo, that's good. If you have um, a nice candid, that's good as well. Here's what you want to think about when you're putting your profile in, your, your photo. You want it to be friendly. You want it to look very inviting. Um, you want, um, I don't recommend a scowl. I don't recommend a super serious look. Um, you want people to like the face and, and uh, want to look more into your page. Uh, and so if you have a professional pro photo that is very, very formal, that may not be what you want to use. Um, you may want to use, have somebody take a snapshot of you um, sometime at the office or some somewhere setting just so you have um, a good shoulders, head and shoulders um, headshot. Very, very important. Okay, and then you're going to save settings. So it's going to take us back to yes our page okay so that's how to put a photo in the next thing you're going to do is you're going to be putting a title in for you um, and this is this is a very strategic place you want to put a title in here that that does say exactly what you do so um, you sometimes certain representatives and certain sales and certain other positions have kind of ambiguous titles you don't want that you want it to say what you sell and you know what it is your product is and, and how you are related to it so um, think about that um, go ahead and talk, if you already have a profile look and see what did you put for a title does it say the 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 type of work you do you can even say the name of the company right in there now let me show you what I've done with mine and you will want to think about this LinkedIn has a search you'll see up here it has a search field it has a search um, opportunity for everyone to use. It has the ability to go in and search for people by names, by um, different keywords, different industries. There are groups, there are companies. You want to think about that when you're putting to your title together. Now you can see that I kind of have mine stuffed with keywords. This is a little excessive. You probably will not need to do this. But you can see clearly social media and social marketing, those are the keywords that people are looking for when they're looking for someone like me. And so I made sure that I have those in here actually several times. I also made sure I have my geographical location because some of my work is actually in my geographical location. Some of it is not, but this way, if you're looking for a geographical location, you will find me here. So think about that as you're putting your title together. What are the keywords you people might look for you for? Um, how can you put them into that title and include a geographical, lo lo geographical location if you are a geographical business? Now one thing I will tell you that some of you who have already put together a profile, you will see these blocks that show up when you come to your profile that kind of remind you, hey, do you want to put some of these things in? Or it asks you, is this your current position? And so you can, you can use these and say yes, or you can simply ignore them and have them go away. 
Sometimes, for instance, I don't have a lot in here about my education, and that is because my education is in a field that has nothing to do with social media. There certainly wasn't social media when I was getting my education. I was actually in a different industry altogether. Um, I started my career as a court reporter. So that type of background really doesn't do me any good as a marketer, as, as a professional here. When I, this is what I want to be seen for. And to have the court reporting background, I figured it would be it's, it's so far back, it would be confusing, and so I don't put it there. Every once in a while, LinkedIn will remind me, hey, do you want to put in your educational information? And I always click no, because it's an area I just don't need in my profile. You can pick and choose what displays you the best. You do not have to use every section of the uh, profile. You get to decide. It is, however, really good to have the experience section. This is, um, as you know from using LinkedIn, this is what most people are looking at. They're looking at what have you done in the past. It gives us a good idea of you know, what you've been doing for the last few years. And LinkedIn is going to walk you through and ask you different questions. So here again, so here it'll ask me, do I want to add education? If I do, I would open that up and it will give me the fields to fill in and you simply go through this profile with section by section and you decide uh, I'm gonna cancel this you decide do you want to fill each section out and if so what do you want to put in it now there's a lot here there are a lot of sections and I'm not gonna go through all of them with you right now because you can go through them one by one take a look at them and and take your time putting things in my recommendation is when you're starting your profile that you put some of your profile in you know spend a half hour at it today come back tomorrow and spend another half hour you really want to give it some time you also from time to time want to go back in here and just kind of keep making sure that it has all the elements that you want in it that it says what you want it to say one thing I do want to hit on however is this section it is called the summary section this is a section that is wide open for you to use any way you want to use. And so here's the way I recommend you use it. Um, number one, I've put my email in here because I know that people are probably in here searching for my email. And if they didn't see it up higher on the page, they will have it here. You can also put your website here. Um, but this is a section for you to describe your business. It's, it's, it's describe your business, describe what you do, use that marketing language that you've used on your website, that type of language for, to get people interested in what you're doing. It's not just a recitation of your background. We already have background in there. And so here I talk about my business. I also include a lot of the different specialties. What this is, is this is keywords. Again, keywords that people may be looking for and that this will help LinkedIn show me to those people who are searching. I also included my address here again, and that's because I wanted to get that geographical location in there again uh, so that when people search, they will find me. Now, social media is a very competitive industry, so I don't always show up on top of searches. However, many of your industries, you will be able to do that. Um, I worked with um, recently an accountant um, who was able, we were able to put in key, enough keywords and her area was not competitive and so um, she was able to get right to the top of the list you know if you put a lot of keywords in here and if when you try out the search if you don't come up first that's okay um, you at least just want to put in as much as you can for keywords it's just a really good opportunity for us to, to really get the most out of uh, this profile and so again you can put in different interests you can use this any way you like personal details you can use any way you like. Let's talk about endorsements. Endorsements are um, kind of a strange feature. I actually am not real thrilled with them. What happens is LinkedIn will put, give you new features and see, you know, when I think when they put endorsements in here, they figured, you know, this would be a good way for, for you to, um, a faster way for you to recommend people. However, what I find is that there are many people who are endorsing me, for instance, who I don't actually know. If, if only the people would endorse me who have worked with me, that would be better. Now, many of these people have worked with me, but some have not. So endorsements, you know, it's not really something that I look at very much when I go to other people's pages, except maybe just to kind of see, you know, who are their contacts. You can kind of go through here and see who they are. 
So it's got, it has a little bit of use and a little bit of value. I don't, you know, personally, I don't think it has a lot of value. Now that may be different for everybody. I have a very wide audience that I, you know, because of my online marketing, I am, I am, my stuff is seen throughout the entire country. So that could be why I have a lot of people who I don't know who are endorsing me. Um, they have consumed much of my content. That, so that may be different for you. Um, and so play with it and try it out. Everything with social media involves testing. Try stuff out. See what you think. Make out, you know, make your own, uh, uh, mind about, form your own opinions about what works for you and what doesn't. Never be afraid to just play with things here as time permits. All right, so now we're going to talk about making connections. Now, connections is that list of people who, who you have connected with. What that means is both parties agree we are going to be connections. So I'm going to show you that in a second, how you invite people. But essentially, you invite people to be connections with you and then they can invite you as well. So you'll send out an invitation, and if they accept it, you will be a connection. Or they will send you an invitation, and if you accept it, you will be a connection. We're going to talk about that in a minute, the details of exactly how you do that. But first I want to talk about um, what is your strategy for connections? This is a question that comes up quite a bit, and, the, and there's not one answer. So it's an area I like to really talk about because there's a, there's a lot of um, places for you to make decisions on what your strategy should be. Here are some basics as far as who should you connect with. Um, you should connect with people in your industry because you can always, uh, it's a gr LinkedIn is a great place for you to gather kind of you know, market information from, from possibly people who are not necessarily your competitors. For instance, if you do business in here in town, that somebody across the country might be willing to share information because you're not direct competitors. That depends on your business, of course. Uh, you can connect with potential prospects. This is a very, very good use of LinkedIn, a very good use of LinkedIn. You want to find those people who you would like to have connections with and then see if you can get connections with them. Now, if they don't know you, they may not connect, uh, but you can ask for recommendations because you can find out who they know that you may know. And so we'll, we'll, we'll look at some of that here in a minute as well. And then connecting with potential referral sources, those people who send business to you, they are great people to connect with, or potential referral sources. All of those, all of those different things we do every day in our networking, um, the same functions happen here. So when you're going out and you're meeting people at a networking function, you're doing the same type of thing here. When you're just you know, chit-chatting with someone, getting to know them, establishing a relationship, you're doing the same things here. Now, one thing I will talk about in this last point is to take your connections offline. As you're thinking about making connections, as you're growing your list of connections, whenever you are contacting people or they are contacting you, see if you can get an, an offline meeting with them. So in other words, I will contact someone and I will see if I can get a phone call with them um, or if I can get a meeting. Here's, a, here's one example of how this works really well. Uh, in, it is this. There was a marketing director in town that I had not met from a particular um, uh, marketing agency and I wanted to meet this person, did not know her at all. She didn't know me at all. What I did is I went to uh, the internet and I Googled her company just to see what was happening with her company recently, see if there's anything I can kind of you know see that would start a conversation. What I found was they had just redesigned their website. So I thought, perfect. I went to LinkedIn, I invited her to connect I, I simply had you know two sentences um, that is um, I saw your website your new website congratulations on the new design it looks great I talked just about her and not about me so she saw the note had no idea who I was and so she clicked my name to go see who is this person who is uh, seeing my website you're, we're always curious. We use that function a lot. People will always be coming back to your profile and looking at it. So she clicked my name. It took her to my profile. She could see what it is I do. She could see where I'm at. And so then she could see whether this was a potential person that she, you know, may be interested in knowing. And so 
she then answered my uh, connection, my invitation by, by accepting the connection, and then she emailed me back and said, you know, oh, thanks very much, something about the, um, and then she said, I see you're in social media, and, I, and so it opened up just enough of a conversation, you know, for me to, the very next thing I said to her was, you know, yes, I am, would you be interested in meeting sometime and talking about ways we might be able to um, work with each other? You know, the, those very simple things that we do every day can be done here. But the, and then she said yes, and we met. So the point was, this was somebody I did not know at all. I went on, I said just a couple of things about her to her, just nice things, and we connected almost immediately offline. That's where the value of LinkedIn is. It's getting that offline, getting that phone call, getting that meeting, because the, the relationship... Uh, this is a place to start relationships. It's also a place to further relationships. Um, but always, the relationship, if it just stays on LinkedIn, it really doesn't have a lot of value to you. Uh, so taking it offline, is that's one of my most highly recommended strategies. Um, so take that idea, and this will be part of your homework besides getting everything set up with, so, with uh, LinkedIn. But this is one thing I really want you to do, and that is... Go through your contact list. Look for people you haven't talked to in a while. Maybe it's a customer that you had um, but haven't spoke to in a couple years, a referral source, someone you know from years back. Find some people, and every week I try to connect with a couple of people. I try to um, send a brief message just like that to see if I can you know, get, make contact with them again. It's a very easy way to reestablish contacts. I've had clients who I um, had them do this exercise, just spend a few minutes every week, and they said that um, several of the people they contacted did answer back, and a couple of them, sure enough, did have meetings with them, and very often it leads to um, new, new work and new business for them. It's just taking those old things we've done in the past and using LinkedIn to do those same things, reconnecting with people. So let me show you just here in my um, profile, you will see up here to the corner, and sometimes they move it around, sometimes it's in the middle, but over it's here right now. Um, you'll see an envelope, and this is invitations and mes messages. When you come to LinkedIn, this is the first thing I always do is I look over here to see, um, I click this open. It'll give me two sections for messages and invitations. Let's look at invitations. Okay, so here you will see people who have um, invited me to be a connection. So each person, I can go through, I can click their name, I can go see who they are first, and then I can come back and I can either accept it or ignore it. Now. Pretty soon after you get onto LinkedIn, other people will see you are there and they will start inviting you to, to connect with them. And this is very simply the, the best way to get started is accepting some of those invitations that are coming to you. And so I would go right on down this list. Now as you get, as you get going and you've you connected to a few people, LinkedIn is going to, going to try to help you out, try to help you find other people you may know. And so they always have this section called People You May Know. And this is just, they've looked through your contact list, they've looked through your friends' contact lists to see, hey, maybe there's some people here you would like to connect to as well. Same thing, go through, take a look and see who they are, or, or if you know already who they are, you know, then absolutely um, ask them to connect. Now let me show you how you can search for people that you may know uh, to connect with. You want to go up to the search field and type in the, the name of someone you know. I'm going to type in, here's somebody that I know but I'm not connected to yet. When you click the search field, it's going to look in the companies, in the groups, it's going to look in the um, lists of people to see you know, who you, it is you may know. And so I'm going to look at this list and I'm going to look through and I'm going to find the person I know. Now, now let me just show you um, what happens here. This is not the person I know, but let me show you what happens. I can take a look and see her profile simply by, by, taking a, by clicking on that. Um, I can go back to it and then decide to see if I want to connect. So I'm going to click connect 
and this is the list that you will get. Now this will pop up every time you're trying to connect with somebody new. It is going to ask you how do you know this person because LinkedIn discourages you from um, connecting with people you don't know. We, they don't want us spamming each other which makes a lot of sense and so this is how they try to um, to hold that down to a minimum. So you can say you are a colleague and it'll ask you oh what company did you work with? You can say you are a classmate it'll ask you oh, what school did you go to? Or we've done business together and it'll let you tell uh, tell which, um, which of your previous companies um, that you've done business together with. Um, and again if you if you put friend sometimes it will ask you to give their email to make sure you actually are a friend and then other again here it asks to give the email now these rules do change quite a bit the last one is I don't know Karen and often if you try to send this it will tell you um, you really should know people before you link to them and it may not let you do it they change these rules all the time so you're going to want to take a look at that and see but that all that is is just a way for them to make sure you have a connection you tell them what the connection is and then you send the invitation once the invitation is sent uh, you will then wait until that person accepts that invitation and then you will be connected.